What's up guys? I'm Michelle Boyd and you may know me from Watching Thrones, which you can catch on Screen Junkies Live every Monday while season six of Game of Thrones is going on. But in the meantime, I've gotten a lot of questions about the different religions in Westeros and Essos in the world of Game of Thrones, because there's a lot. And I do the Maester's Lesson on Watching Thrones, which is awesome. It gives you a little bit of background over something that was just mentioned in the show, but there's a lot of religions and there's a lot to go over. So it's a bit much for that show. I thought I would do a supplementary video. Let me know if you like this sort of thing because then I can keep doing it. God knows there are so many different things in the world of Game of Thrones and the books in Song of Ice and Fire that you can go over. Also, it should go without saying, here there be spoilers. You've been warned. In this video, I'm gonna go over the five major religions that pop up in Game of Thrones. We have the Faith of the Seven, the Old Gods, the Drowned God, Rolor, or the Lord of Light, and the Many-Faced God. All right, number one, Faith of the Seven. This is the overarching religion of all of Westeros. Basically, this is the one true God kind of divided into seven aspects of it. You have the father, the mother, the warrior, the maiden, the crone, the smith, and the stranger. This religion is the one that that High Sparrow keeps spouting all that nonsense about and what Stannis burned all the way back in season two. This was the religion that the first men brought over with the Andals and was adopted throughout all of Westeros. And when Aegon the Conqueror came over, all the Targaryens just adopted this religion and it's been kind of the main religion of Westeros ever since. Interestingly enough, this is the one major religion in Westeros that doesn't really have any evidence for it. This seems like George is just sort of making a bit of a statement about placating the masses through religion. Number two, old gods. This is more along the lines of those nature gods that you see those chicks from the craft praying to back in the 90s, but with far less goth clothing. The old gods are symbolized by a number of things, mostly nature, but especially all those weirwood trees that you see. Those are those big white trees with all the red leaves with the faces crying what looks like blood, which is not creepy at all. This is the weirwood tree where Ned was praying to when you first meet him. This is also the type of tree that Bran and the Three-Eyed Raven are communing with as well. There's quite a bit of evidence that this religion has something to it. Obviously, you've got the Children of the Forest that Bran meets up in the north. You've got Bran now time hopping through werewood.net. You also have warging. Essentially, you paint with all the colors of the wind and you get a direwolf body. Cool. Number three, Drowned God. Ah, the god of CPR. This was practiced pretty much only by the people over in the Iron Islands, so the Greyjoys over there in Pike, with arguably the most badass words. What is dead may never die but rises again harder and stronger. Incidentally, that rising again harder and stronger concept could also apply to the Night's King come at me bro moment. So I guess what I'm saying is be very careful about what you want coming back harder and stronger. As far as evidence for it being real, any lifeguard can bring someone back from the dead and say it's to the drowned god. But incidentally, there is a little bit of prophecy magic surrounding this book-only character called Patchface, who gets lost at sea and then spouts seeming nonsense when he comes back that all turn out to be kind of predictions. For instance, he predicted the Red Wedding before it actually happened. So maybe there is something to the drowned god being true, but that's pretty much the only evidence we've gotten so far. Number four, the many-faced god. This is the prime god of the House of Black and White and those faceless men that we and Arya love so dearly. She drinks the Kool-Aid to join them. Essentially what the faceless men believe is that all gods are one god and that god is death. The faceless men are the servants of the many-faced god, but ironically, they are not supposed to choose who they kill. Instead, the choice is made by money, so essentially they're mercenaries. Oh my god, Deadpool is a faceless man. Everything makes so much more sense now. Fifth, and finally, the god on everyone's mind after John came back from the dead, Rolor. Rolor. Rol Roller? Roller. Roller. The god that nobody can spell. Ever. Yes, it, it's impossible. Oh, Lord of Light! Or how Beric Dondarrion and Jon Snow got their group back. The bloodsucker of penises. The Salem Witch Trials approach to solving problems. And yes, I know the Salem Witch Trials never burned anybody, but I'm trying to make a point here, okay? Rolor is a fairly recent migrant over to Westeros, originating back over in Essos, around a fire-based god that, interestingly enough, seems to have a lot to do with the Targaryen house words, fire and blood. Interesting? Maybe? Because that also centers around a prophecy concerning the prince that was promised. They also seem to be scared of something called the Great Other. 
very Voldemort. It's he who must not be named. It's the god of darkness that's supposed to combat the god of light, and there's gonna be a great battle, and this prince who was promised is gonna come in and save everybody. Evidence for this being the real religion. Well, it brings people back from the dead. That would make me a convert right off the bat. You've got shadow babies. You have prophecies. Don't blame the people who are interpreting the prophecies. That is not their fault. You've got weather magic. You have glamour magic. And if I had a good enough filter, this is where I would morph into a 400 year old woman, but I don't. Those are the five major ones. You also have a few others like the Dothraki horse lord. It's a horse in the sky. That's pretty much it. You've got the black goat, the great shepherd, the summer isles, which worship a fertility goddess with 16 boobs. There is a god of tits and wine. Tyrion would be so happy. Also, of course, there is other magic happening in the world, cuz dragons. So essentially to wrap up, George has stated a few times that there is no one true religion and that all the evidence that I just listed in this video doesn't really mean that that particular religion is right. You know, even though Melisandre calls on the Lord of Light to raise Jon, we don't know if the same thing might have worked had some scion of the drowned god come in and decided to say some words and do the same thing. Just apparently what magic wants to happen, it's gonna happen. Hope you liked this video, giving you a little bit more backstory onto the religions of Game of Thrones. If there's something else that you want explained a little bit more, please let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all this stuff. You can find me all over the interwebs, and you especially can find me every Monday at 1 o'clock Pacific Standard Time on Screen Junkies Plus with Watching Thrones. Our analyzation after show of Game of Thrones, we record it live so you guys can Skype in, you guys can interact with us, there's a trivia game, all sorts of fun stuff. So hope you liked it and I'll see you guys Monday.